this is Jana with Pearl Together. It's a super busy day here on the farm, so I'm just kind of taking you with me to do the little intro. I'm wearing my favorite tie-dye t-shirt because I'm still canning tomatoes and I always splatter on myself, so there's that. The neighbors were moving cattle today, so I had to move my steers and my bull kind of to a different pasture so they didn't cause a ruckus with the neighbor's girls that were going by on the road. So I had to move them, and now I'm moving them back because they want back where they used to be, where their hay feeder and their water is. So this is why I'm doing my intro outside walking around today. So, sorry about that. But it's busy here. Today's felting day, so I'm super excited about that. I'm going to show you how to felt your slippers in the washing machine. I have a front loader. Um, a top loader is better for agitation. But you can totally do it in a front loader. I'll show you how I did mine. And then I'll also show you how I did the second pair in a bucket. So that's totally doable too. It takes a long time. So before we get started, I want to say thanks so much to all my patrons. I couldn't bring you videos each and every week without your help and support. So head on over to patreon.com if you're interested to see what benefits I'm offering and trade for your monthly pledge. Now Patreon has added a new feature where you can do an annual membership and save 15% if you'd prefer to do that. And that's wonderful as well. That's a really good perk and a way to save some money but still support the channel. So thanks so much for considering that. Hop on over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together. At the end of this video there'll be a link as well as down below in the description box. Okay, let's get started with the felting. Okay, in we go. Then I'm going to set my washer on, let's see, I'm going to do quick wash, and then I'm going to put mine on hot, and normally for me, I just do regular normal soil, okay, normally for me, this first bit where the washer just fills, that usually takes probably seven or eight minutes, and then I'll come back and check, because I want it to fill and have a little bit of agitation, but I want to catch the washer before it drains and then starts over again with the next part of the cycle. So I'll set my timer on my phone for probably seven or eight minutes and then I'll come and check. Okay, so I'm back and the water is just draining the hot water that came through first. But always when I first start, it seems like the water's not as hot as it could be because, you know, the water it's getting from our hot water heater which is quite a ways away from the actual washer so i'm going to actually cancel this the door the door is not locked anymore when i push pause and waited it for a few minutes my unlocks now i don't know if your machine's that way or not um, but i can actually open this now close it um, but i don't want to restart i'm actually just going to turn it off restart that same cycle because what i want is just the hot water a little bit of agitation, and then I want to do that as many times as necessary. Now you could run the whole cycle on hot. You could just run the whole cycle three or four times with your slippers in there and a couple of towels, and that would be okay. Um, but I'm just going to continue to set it on hot and do that first seven or eight minutes as many times as I need to. So I'm not even going to open it and check on the slippers because I know that once is not enough. Okay, so I'll set my timer again and come back in seven or eight minutes. See, in my machine, this is why it takes a while, because that's what we want, is that tumbling. And then it stops, and it goes back the other way, and that's all great. But it's not very aggressive, and that's why I find top loaders to be much better. Because, um, you know, they just do the swishing back and forth. Okay, I've done the first part of this cycle, I think, six times. I might have lost track. Anyway, I set my timer, was doing other things, lost track. But... Anyway, after several times, this is super wet, but you can tell that it's shrunk quite a bit. It's very felted. It's almost lost all of the stitch definition, so that's what you want for everything to be mashed together. So now I'm just going to go ahead and complete the cycle like normal. All right, I think these look great. I've just stuffed them with paper towels, and I've shaped them the way I want them to be, and now I'm just going to wait for them to dry. Okay, I'm out here on my porch and I've got a five gallon bucket with warm water and just a drop of detergent. I'm going to take these other felt slippers and I'm going to put them right in there. Push them down until they're all saturated. Then you can use, a lot of people use a plunger. Um, if I had one that was brand new and maybe I would. But I'm just going to use a four by four 
stick that I have because that seems handy and I'm just gonna agitate and mash everything around however long it takes so I'll let you know what it looks like after a while okay I've brought out a pitcher of warmer water from the house because I think the temperature does make a bit of a difference actually and then I have a couple of older hand towels that I'm going to add in there just to help swish things around some and create some more agitation. So I'm just going to, it's just hard to do while I'm holding the camera, but I'm going to go around like this, simulating the agitation of a top loader. And we'll just see how long this is going to take. Okay, I've moved in the house because it got super windy and not very nice outside. So now, after about 45 minutes of using the stick, and the towels in the bucket at the same time as the slippers, I decided that is not working out so well and it's taking forever. So what I also discovered after doing some more research in some books as well as on the YouTubes is that if you just work it around like this and felt by hand, it's gonna go much quicker. I did add some soap to help kind of lubricate the action with the fibers, I guess, I don't know. Um, it is normal for things to stretch and grow a little bit first and then the fibers will start to come together and shrink down So I'm about I think to that stage of things So you can see I've rinsed this one off a little bit. And you can see that the, the uh, fibers are starting to come together You don't see a whole lot of stitch definition although there is some uh, this is pretty fuzzy fuzzy wool with the addition of the mohair um, but you know you can still see some stitch definition so I'm definitely not there yet, but it is it's coming together. I've drained the water a couple different times and I'm just, uh, you know, filtering it more, getting the soap out, agitating, and they're starting to shrink. So that's an improvement. So I'm just going to keep on with this until they're the size that I want. Okay, so you can see there's no more stitch definition. It's, everything's really fuzzy and felted together and firm, although, you know, the sole has a little bit of stitch left. Um, and like I said, it's pretty big still, so I think I'm just going to work it around on some hot water and see if I can shrink that up some more. Um, and I may put it in the dryer. Okay, so I would say the advantage of doing it, this in the bucket is that you're not going to get any of these little, you know, tidbits and... Uh, bits of wool stuck in your washer. Um, I don't really mind putting them in the dryer just because that's what you have the lint screen for. So I think, you know, I think that's all right. I'll show you how I'm going to wring these out. I'm just going to wring them out in the bucket and then squeeze everything out in, the, in a towel. Just roll everything up in a towel just as you would if you're blocking a project. Okay, I've wrung these out by hand and now I'm just going to roll them up in a towel and stand on that. Get the rest of the water squeezed out and then I'm gonna go throw them in the dryer with some jeans. Okay, these have just finished about 40 minutes in the dryer with some jeans and they're still really large. So I think I'm gonna carry on and shrink them up some more. Okay, I'm really happy with the way these turned out. They're really dense and thick and I like that a lot. Um, the person I made these for, she has really wide feet. So we're probably gonna to have to you know, have her wear them and stretch them out a little bit. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm really pleased with, with how these turned out. Now, this fuzziness is just a function of that type of yarn with the mohair. It doesn't bother me. Uh, some people don't like that much fuzz, but eh, I'm fine with it. So, yay, I'm really happy with how both these both of my pair turned out. So, obviously, it's both the Lamb's Pride and that's fuzzy. So, I don't think that the uh, Plymouth Galloway that many of you are using, I don't think it comes out this fuzzy because it doesn't have that mohair. Um, but I don't mind it. Okay, I hope you found those videos to be really helpful. I've made many pairs of felted clogs and I will continue to do so. They make fantastic gifts. They're really cozy and a wonderful way to tell the people in your life, I care if you're warm this winter. <laughs> be sure to post photos of your finished clogs in the Facebook and the Ravelry group. I'd love to see them. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notifications so you'll find out right away what is our next knit along coming up in October. All right, I look forward to seeing you next time.